हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट ए रिफ्लेक्स एनी रिफ्लेक्स बाय डेफिनेशन इट वुड मीन एन ऑटोमेटिक इन वॉलेंट्री एक्ट और ऑटोमेटिक इन वॉलेंट्री प्रोसेस बट डू यू नो ऑफ एनी रिफ्लेक्स विच कैन ऑल्सो बी जनरेटेड इन ए वॉलेंट्री एक्ट इन अ वॉलेंट्री मैनर यू नो देर वॉज अ बॉलीवुड मूवी सुपर हिट मूवी ऑफ यस्टर इयर्स इन विच द हीरो एंड इज लेडी लव दे टॉक इन अ साइन लैंग्वेज और अ कोड लैंग्वेज लाइक दिस you must have guessed the movie by now but that's not the topic for this video the topic for this video is curve reflex so the point that i was making is that the curve is a reflex process or a reflex act and yet it can also be generated by a voluntary act so that's makes it little special or unique let's understand everything about this curve reflex its neural circuitry its mechanism and some applied aspect so cuff is a neural reflex neurally mediated reflex and it's a primary defense mechanism of the respiratory tract uh, let's add here that uh, the cuff reflex and the sneeze reflex these are the two primary defense mechanisms of the respiratory passage or respiratory tract uh, when a foreign particle is in the upper respiratory passage including nose etc then uh, it will induce the sneeze reflex and when a foreign particle is reaching the lower respiratory passages it will induce the cough reflex but the purpose of both these will be the same in an explosive fashion air is thrown out so that with that explosive air the foreign particle is also thrown out that's the purpose of these two reflexes there are differences uh, in these two reflexes for example cuff reflex uh, initially the vocal cords are closed and then the expired air comes out in the case of sneeze reflex it happens with an open uh, uh, vocal cord so uh, the glot is open rather uh, so uh, that's the difference anyways we will concentrate on the cuff reflex it's a protective reflex as i mentioned uh, it protects from two things one foreign particles foreign substances irritating damaging materials from reaching the lung so uh, by this explosive air coming out those substances are thrown out and second excess accumulation of secretions that will also make the breathing very difficult and therefore those accumulated secretions are also thrown out by the uh, reflex act of cuff or cuff reflex any reflex now let's talk about the circuitry of this reflex any reflex has a receptor which will initiate or trigger the reflex act then it has afferent nerves which will carry the impulses to the center where the uh, reflex is integrated and then it has efferent nerves any reflex will have efferent nerves which come back uh, and they uh, act on the effector organ so as to elicit that reflex so let's see for cuff reflex what are these components receptors for cuff reflex uh, cuff reflex i beg your pardon are located in the walls of the respiratory tract you know respiratory tract is lined from within by epithelial cells so this is where the uh, receptors are located mainly trachea and bronchi remember uh, in the initial uh, 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 respiratory tree or uh, initial generations of the respiratory tree these receptors are abundant and then as you go down lower in the lower generations of the respiratory passage they become less and less in number and they are almost absent beyond the respiratory bronchioles so remember beyond the respiratory bronchioles there are alveoli at those places the cuff receptors are not present these are rapidly adapting irritant receptors remember receptors are of two types slowly adapting and rapidly adapting these are rapidly adapting irritant receptors that's how they are classified or categorized receptors are located within the sensory distribution of 5th 9th and 10th nerves so whenever uh, the sensory distribution areas of these nerves are stimulated it can result in the cuff reflex and as i said located mainly in the trachea larynx and carina less abundant in the distal airways or let's say lower generations of the respiratory tree they are less abundant and absent beyond the respiratory bronchioles and these receptors are extremely sensitive to irritating substances as we have seen already and excess secretions 
so cuff reflex is going to achieve these two purposes uh, foreign materials will be thrown out and excessive secretions uh, are not allowed to accumulate they also will be thrown out afferent impulses carried uh, i mean impulses generated by the receptors will be carried via afferent impulses they are carried in the vagus nerve so afferent vagal fibers are the afferent fibers which start from the receptors and take the signals to the center cuff center is located in the medulla now a special mention uh, should be made here you know there are uh, centers for various automatic or uh, involuntary processes for example there is a swallowing center in the medulla there is vasomotor center in the medulla there is respiratory center in the medulla these are well defined areas but in the case of cuff reflex it is only known that it's in the medulla but it's not a very highly defined or very well defined area in the medulla so cuff center in the medulla and then the efferent nerves efferent nerves include recurrent laryngeal nerve and the spinal nerves recurrent laryngeal nerve because there is going to be closure of glottis and then the glottis will open and these movements of the vocal cords uh, will require this nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve and the spinal nerves spinal nerves because there is going to be contraction of the abdominal muscles during the cuff reflex uh, so spinal nerves and apart from that of course cortex also can generate impulses and those impulses can be sent via the efferent limb uh, to cause the cuff reflex so as i said this is a reflex and yet we can also voluntarily generate the act of cuff because cortex can generate those impulses for expiratory muscles so uh, this is the neural circuitry now let's see the mechanism of cuff first there is going to be inspiration then the glottis will be closed and then there will be expiration these are the steps in the cuff reflex so contraction of the diaphragm and external intercostals you know these are the muscles for inspiration so contraction of these muscles will generate negative intrathoracic pressure step number one now negative pressure generated around the lungs so lungs will distend and there will be a rapid inspiration of a large volume of air almost up to 2.5 liters remember our normal tidal volume is uh, 500 ml but in this case a large amount of air will be inspired after that as i mentioned rapid closure of glottis so glottis closes at this stage and why is that it's because we need to create an excess pressure during expiration so as to that foreign particle or secretion is thrown out and therefore there is closure of glottis and then forceful contraction of the abdominal and expiratory muscles so at this stage there is going to be a forceful expiration now contraction of these muscles would elevate the intrathoracic pressure now that's a necessity intrathoracic pressure will have to become positive greatly positive and how much is it it's almost 100 to 130 centimeters of water remember thoracic cage is generating pressure over the lungs during the expiration so there's going to be a forceful expiration now rapid opening of the glottis at this stage glottis was closed and expiration started so a great pressure was generated in the respiratory tract now the glottis glottis opens because the particle has to be thrown out so glottis needs to be opened and as the rapid opening of glottis and explosive expulsion of air air is expelled in an explosive fashion with a velocity or speed of almost 100 miles per hour that's the speed with which the air will be expelled out in an explosive fashion and uh, with an explosive bark the air is see that expired air is coming out so it will cause vocal cord vibrations and that generates that typical sound or explosive bark of the cuff so it will throw the particle out when the glottis opens uh, two things are happening when the glottis opens 
there is a large pressure gradient between the airways and the atmosphere there is a large pressure generated in the airways and atmospheric pressure is zero so there is a pressure gradient between the airways and the atmospheric air or the atmosphere because of this pressure gradient air is going to travel very rapidly towards the atmosphere i mean uh, it's going to travel to the outside outside and the other thing is there is tracheal narrowing you can imagine this trachea respiratory passage if it narrows there will be a great turbulence created in the air why it is coming out through that narrowed trachea can you imagine this a narrowed passage and the air coming out that air will generate a lot of shearing force and that shearing force will throw the foreign particle out of the respiratory passage so tracheal narrowing and that produces rapid flow rates through the trachea shearing forces will be created and expulsion of mucus expulsion of secretions expulsion of the foreign materials so that's the mechanism involved in the cuff now let's see some additional points uh, i have added this feature of physio plus plus in all my videos so that you can write this in the exam and you get extra marks there is something called as arnold's nerve reflex related to the arnold nerve so it's called as arnold's nerve reflex stimulation of the auricular branch did you know this that stimulation of the auricle can lead to cuff reflex yes it's called as arnold's nerve reflex stimulation of the auricular branch of 10th nerve auricular branch of the vagus uh, supplying the ear may elicit cuff so remember stimulation of the auricle stimulation of the ear may result in a cuff reflex this is called as ear cuff reflex or arnold's nerve reflex and it's an example it is said to be the example of vagal hypersensitivity in some people the vagus nerve is hypersensitive uh, and therefore this is an example of that hypersensitivity how do you test the cuff reflex clinical testing of cuff reflex is done by nebulized capsaicin you know capsaicin is very irritating uh, substance so it is given by nebulization as it reaches the respiratory passage it's going to irritate those cuff receptors and it will generate the cuff reflex so clinical testing of cuff reflex is done by this method finally let's also talk about some more physio plus plus cuff reflex may be impaired in certain conditions like if there is weakness or paralysis of the respiratory muscles you know there is uh, injury to the cervical spine or any such condition which will which has caused weakness of the respiratory muscles it will impair the cuff reflex and what happens if the cuff reflex is impaired and the patient is also uh, not conscious those secretions which we are talking about they will accumulate in the respiratory passage apart from that uh, presence of nasogastric tube very often you will see in the icu nasogastric tube has been uh, pushed into the patient's respiratory uh, in the stomach actually but uh, it may also impair the cuff reflex so uh, from time to time those secretions also will have to be uh, sucked out because the patient is unable to cuff them cuff the secretions out uh, in a natural manner depressed medullary centers yes there are conditions which can depress the medulla and suppression of the uh, medullary centers can also inhibit the cuff reflex in fact sometimes the cuff may be very very irritating there is a dry cuff and it may be very very irritating particularly during sleeping hours and therefore there are certain drugs that can be given they suppress the medullary cuff centers opioids or codeine for example uh, it acts on the medullary center and it suppresses the cuff but remember cuff is of two types dry cuff and productive cuff if it's a productive cuff it should not be suppressed it, it should be, it should be actually promoted not suppressed but if it's a dry hacking cuff then uh, it should it can, it should be suppressed so that it's not a very irritating thing particularly during night hours so the drugs that can be given to suppress the cuff finally uh, an interesting uh, story about ace inhibitors and cuff you know uh, hypertension is treated by this category called as ace inhibitors uh, 
angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors now this enzyme the angiotensin converting enzyme is present in the lungs and it uh, it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is a very very potent vasoconstrictor one of the reasons for uh, hypertension and therefore you give ace inhibitors inhibit this enzyme and uh, it's a treatment for hypertension but then when this category was developed and it was launched into the market uh, it was later on found out that the side effect of these drugs is cough initially it was thought that uh, since ace the enzyme is present in the lungs and the drug goes there to inhibit this enzyme probably that's the reason why uh, cough is happening but later on it was also discovered that uh, ace enzyme is uh, normally responsible for uh, degradation of bradykinin and other kinins so if you give ace inhibitors then the bradykinin and kinins other kinins will accumulate and they are responsible for this cough but remember ace inhibitors and a very well known side effect is cough so this is in summary uh, the cough reflex and the mechanism of cough but remember prolonged cough may be exhausting and it may be damaging to the respiratory tree or uh, it may be damaging to the lung parenchyma and in such cases suppression of the cough uh, by acting on the cough center would be a better idea